New research has found that mirror therapy can help to reduce spasticity after stroke. Let's dig into it. And before I go into the specifics of the study, I also wanna clear up any confusion about mirror therapy. This is something that I've talked about before. Mirror therapy is already an evidence-based technique that therapists recommend for stroke survivors who want to regain movement after their stroke. However, mirror therapy to reduce spasticity is less understood, but more and more research is coming out in support of it, which is why I wanted to talk about it today. There are actually two different studies that I wanna to cover today. And the first is effects of mirror therapy on spasticity and sensory impairment after stroke, systematic review and meta-analysis. A systematic review is when the researchers look at all of the existing research on a particular topic related to their research question or their hypothesis. And then the meta-analysis is the statistical analyzation of the results from those included studies in the systematic review in order to make a recommendation or a conclusion of some kind. So this first study was published in 2023 in the Journal of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. Researchers focused on comparing mirror therapy to other neuroplasticity-based interventions, specifically cross-education training, as well as sort of traditional conventional exercise. And they included studies that used the modified Ashworth scale, which is just an assessment of the level of spasticity that somebody has as the primary outcome measure. And if you're unfamiliar with cross-education training, it's basically when you train the unaffected side in order to get strength gains and movement gains on your affected side. And I know it sounds crazy, but there is evidence to back it up. So looking through all of those studies, they analyzed the effectiveness of these three different interventions on both spasticity and sensory impairment for stroke survivors. And here's where things get really interesting. When they compared mirror therapy directly to cross-education training, they found that there were no significant differences between the two treatments. And I know initially this might sort of sound like a bad thing, but in reality, this means that both of the interventions were actually effective at reducing spasticity. And then when they compared mirror therapy to traditional exercise, the results showed similar levels of effectiveness between both approaches. Now, there were some limitations with this study as there are with the other one, which I'm gonna cover at the very end. But one of the things that they found was that a unilateral training approach so working on one side at a time was more effective than a bilateral training approach, which is using both limbs at the same time. Just think it's important to note uh, so that you know what might be most effective for your home rehab. All right, moving on to study number two, the effect of mirror therapy on spasticity in adult patients with stroke, a systematic review and meta-analysis. Now this was recently just published in July of 2025 in the Topics in Stroke Rehabilitation Journal. So again, another systematic review and meta-analysis looking at a bunch of different studies and then analyzing those results. The researchers in this study also used the modified Ashworth scale as the primary outcome measure. Again, that's just an assessment of the level of spasticity that somebody has. They specifically looked at adult stroke patients comparing mirror therapy to conventional therapy, sham therapy, and then some other therapy controls. Remember, there are lots of studies that are included in these systematic reviews. So here's what they found. They analyzed the upper and lower extremities together, and they found that mirror therapy showed a statistically significant and beneficial effect on the modified Ashworth scale. Functionally, this means that they saw less spasticity according to that assessment. So we have some really interesting and promising results from these studies, uh, but both of these studies do have some limitations I wanna quickly mention. Uh, the sample size of the studies wasn't necessarily large enough for all of the comparisons to make super um, robust recommendations. Um, there was also a moderate level of heterogeneity, and this just means we can't blanketly say that this is gonna work for everybody. In many of the studies that they looked at in these systematic reviews, they were grouping both upper limb and lower limb spasticity together, Ideally, we would wanna see some studies that separate these out um, to, to see if there is a difference when treating spasticity in the upper limb versus the lower limb. 
And then some of the studies they included had methodological limitations. So the way that their study was designed or completed had maybe some issues, including things like uh, too short of a duration of mirror therapy or whatever intervention they were looking at, different protocols for the same or different types of interventions, and then including an inadequate movement variety. So maybe they only focused on one or two exercises instead of including a more um, robust, well-rounded exercise program. So what do these results mean for you? Well, if you experience upper or lower body spasticity, mirror therapy or cross education training may be able to reduce it. And really this is great news because even if you have little to no movement of your affected side, these focus on the movements of your unaffected limb to help you get movement gains as well as to reduce spasticity in your affected side. These interventions also need to be done for an adequate amount of time. On average, on the studies that were included in these systematic reviews, um, the duration of the intervention was around 12 weeks, uh, on average around five days a week for less than an hour. Remember, there's variability in these different protocols um, and, and study designs. So some might have been 30 minutes, others might have been 45 minutes. Um, and then at least a total of 20 sessions over that 12 week period. Broadly speaking, they found that movement variety was really important. So having a diverse set of exercises to include actually led to better outcomes. So what that means practically is don't just do the same two exercises over and over again for 12 weeks. You know, you wanna include some different exercises to help keep your brain challenged. How do you do it? If you are wanting to start mirror therapy at home to regain movement or to reduce spasticity, you'll wanna start by either purchasing a mirror therapy box or building one on your own. Mirror therapy boxes tend to be pretty pricey, around 70 US dollars. Um, and I actually made a video a while ago about how you can make yours for around $5. Now, that might be a little more expensive these days with the prices of things, uh, but you can usually still make your own relatively cheaper than buying one brand new. And it's gonna be just as effective. Now, I am not gonna go through the entire mirror therapy protocol I use in this video. It is getting long enough, but I will leave links down in the description. I've got two videos you'd probably wanna check out. The first is where I do cover the protocol, the details of kind of the nitty gritty of how to do mirror therapy. And the second video is an actual mirror therapy session uh, for the upper extremity arm and hand. So you can go check those out by looking in the uh, description below. Now, I also made a video not too long ago about cross education training, what it is, why it works and how to do it. So you can find that also down in the description below if you're interested in learning more about that to help reduce your spasticity and improve your movement. Leave me a comment and let me know if you would like more videos where I share current research on stroke recovery and rehabilitation. Of course, please support the channel however you can, like this video, subscribe, become a channel member by clicking the join button, or leave us a super thanks by clicking in the YouTube bar below. And a huge thank you to all of the donors who make this nonprofit possible. With a special thank you to Heather G, Ryan D, Modus Nova, and Joseph M and our Empower tier on Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.